Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light, Little Flop. You know, it's interesting when you are coming into any type of spiritual enlightenment or scriptural understanding or whatever words you want to call it. When you first come in, you come in to other people who so-called know. Okay? They so-called know about the thing that you're coming into, you see, trying to learn about. They so-called know. Well, if you were to ask somebody that says that they know about spiritualism or spirituality, scriptures, anything like that, and you ask them what things you must do, and they start giving you a long ass list <laughs> of stuff to do to be accepted by God or stuff that you can do to be good. How do I be good? And they start telling you stuff, then they don't actually know. Because the answer to the latter question, how do I be good, is there ain't no good but God. So ain't no need in you trying to be good because you ain't good at all. There's nothing good in you. But Abba Yah, he's good. Y'all understand that? So if they don't give you that answer, then they don't know what in the hell they talking about. Even though they saying that they do know. You hear me? Remember he says that there are men who put heavy burdens on others that they won't even lift one finger to lift it. You see? They won't even lift one finger. They're hypocrites. They say you must do this, 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 and this in order to be good or be accepted by God. But then they don't do any of the things that they tell you to do. You see it? But it's real easy. It ain't hard to figure out. You just got to know the answers. <laughs> you just got to know. And the, and the way that you know is in the word. That's how you know it. The answers come out the word. And if you search the word or hold the person accountable who has told you the answer by asking them to show you in the word their answer, then they don't know. And it is best that you don't listen to them. You see how that's working? Now watch this. Somebody says, what must I do? What must I do? And somebody says, keep the commandments. And then like that man said, well, which ones? And then Christ starts saying, love your mother, love your brother. I mean, you know, don't commit adultery. Don't do this. Start giving them the Ten Commandments. And the man said, I have done all of those things. And then he said, well, sell all you have, give to the poor, and come and follow me then. Because the law is what leads you unto Christ. And if you knew the scriptures, then you'd understand what Christ was saying there. He's saying, well, if you've been keeping those commandments of not committing adultery, not stealing, not killing. If you are keeping those commandments, then... Now it's time for you to start following me. Since you understand the, the commandments and keeping them, then it's time you start following me. Why? Because the law was a schoolmaster that brought us unto Christ, just like the scriptures say. So that we could learn the higher law, the golden law, the law, the law above all laws. Do y'all hear me today or what? That's why. So you can learn it from Christ. So now, if somebody was to ask you that question, well, what must I do? What I got to do? You may refer them to Romans, you see, chapter 13, and get your answer right out of there. Now, let's see what it says. Right here in verse 8, it says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. So let's stop right there. But means accept. So don't owe a man nothing. Don't be in debt to any man. Accept the debt of love. Treat your brothers as if you owe them a debt of love. Pay them with love as, as if you owe them. Do you hear that today, Israel? For he that loves another has what? 
I want y'all to hear this. So we ain't got no more discrepancies about what a man must do. It's very simple. It's very simple. And at the end of the day, it's going to remain simple. It ain't going to get complicated just because y'all want it complicated. Nor is it going to change just because you want it to change. It's going to stay true and it's going to stay simple. Love works no ill. You hear that? For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, listen, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not kill. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And if there be any other commandment, I want you to hear that real clear today. Don't hear it. Scoff, wave your hand, and walk back off in your folly again. Israel, shake that shit off once and for all. This is making it so clear that you have to just be rebellious to fight against it. For he that loves another. What has he done when he has loved his brother or his sister? What has he done? He has fulfilled Fulfilled means done it up unto satisfaction, nigga. Completed the task unto satisfaction. Unto completion. That's what fulfillment means. If you owe somebody a debt and you fulfill it, do you still owe them the debt? So then if you love somebody and you have fulfilled the law in doing that, do you still have to do some other commandments? <sighs> Boy. So then why are y'all saying that you do? That's my question. That's my question. Why is anybody, Christians, Jewish, uh, evangelicals, Catholics, any damn body, why are you saying we have something else that we have to do when it's written right there that if we love, we fulfill all that commandments? That's what it say. We're fulfilling it if we love. Because all those commandments you're going to tell me to do, even if I didn't mention the one you may tell me, that's what he's saying by saying, if there be any other commandment, that means if you got something else you think I should do, I can simply fulfill that by loving you. Because it's stupid for me and you to sit up here and you to give me a low laundry list of shit worth to do when I only got one thing on my list for us to do. You're going, hey man, don't commit adultery when you come over here to my house. So in other words, don't lay with my wife. I love you, brother. See how I'm about to whack a mole your little command? I love you. Why do I care about what you're telling me to do when I already love you? I would never lay with your wife if I love you. And then you still start giving me more commandments to keep. Hey, brother, don't kill any of, of me or my family. But I love you, brother. Why would I kill you or your family? Are you crazy? I love you. See how I keep whack a mole your commandments with my one commandment that fulfills all other commandments? You say, brother, when you come to my house, please don't covet my things and don't and steal from me. Please don't do that. Brother, I love you. I want you to have all good, good things. Why would I steal from you? Then I'm not loving you if I steal from you, am I? So you see how I have to break a golden rule before I can even break the other commandments? Can y'all hear me today or what? Now, my question is, is what I'm saying to you true or is it a lie? So then why y'all won't listen? Why y'all won't accept? Why you won't believe me if I'm telling you the truth? Hmm? You can't get around what I'm telling you. Just a little one little scripture. <laughs> You can't get around that. Wait a minute. I've been told my whole life. As an example, I just watched the live stream yesterday morning of a so-called black man and a so-called Jewish man having a debate about who the real Jews are. And so the so-called black man was saying, hey, man, since you're Jewish, why don't you just tell us as black people, see how he's doing this, what we should be doing. It's all inclusive, you say, right, Jewish man? Yes, anybody can be a Jewish man. That's why we proselytize. Okay, then. So then, 
if everybody's supposed to be coming into this family of God, then what must we do once we entered into this family? And the Jewish man started naming off Noahide laws and doing all kinds of things and, 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 and keeping all kinds of commandments. And wait a minute, man, I thought you were a Jew. If you were a Jew, then you would damn sure know that love conquers all. Love conquers all. Now, is there anything that can conquer love? I'll wait all damn day for you niggas. Is there anything that can conquer love? So then who's lying to you? That nigga that started giving you a bunch of other commandments to keep or the man that says to love one another? That is the greatest thing to do. For if I don't love first, then I will steal. Then I will kill. Then I will covet. Then I will bear false witness and I'll do all the things that he told me not to do. And it was all because I chose not to love first. But if I choose love first, then I will not break his commandments. So then let me love today. And does that coincide with the scripture? It indeed does. So then it must be true then. Ain't no chinks in the shit. No breaks in it. No confusion in it. Neither. Is there? He said, if there be any other commandment in this saying, namely, it shall be briefly comprehended. Wait a minute. Let's read that again because I read it kind of strange. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. So if there be any commandment that a man give you, that's what he's saying. If a man give you any commandment to keep, you can briefly understand it by listening to what I'm about to say next. Now, do you want to hear what I'm about to say next? Or do you want to still go off with that heavy ass yoke on your neck? This is the brief saying. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So anything a man tells me to do, I can comprehend it by keeping that commandment in my mind, which is to love my neighbor as myself. Will I take my husband, my, my uh, brother's wife and lay with her if I love my brother? See what I'm trying to say to you niggas? It's so simple and easy. So why isn't the whole vast world saying that and doing it? Because they don't know or believe it. They don't have faith that it's about loving. They think you can do something. Look how good I am. I haven't stolen in five years. I must be acceptable to God. Look at me not bearing false witness. I must be acceptable to God. Look at me not, not um, coveting, not committing adultery. <laughs> I must be good before God. The fact that you're saying you're good proves that your ass ain't, nigga. You want to be greater than the master, but the, the master himself said, why are you calling me good? There is nobody good but father. And then y'all got the nerve to want to be better than him and be called good. Oh, my goodness gracious. Let's continue. Love works no ill to his neighbor. So if you're loving your brother, then you won't work any illness toward him, which means any wrongdoing. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Oh, my goodness gracious. Do y'all hear that or what? He says love is the fulfilling of the law. Do you hear that or not? So did Yahusha fulfill the law? Is it written that that's what he came to do? I came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Is that what he said? So then the, an the simple question is, how did he fulfill it? And the simple answer is, love is how. Because there is no greater love than that a man give up his life for his friends. I no longer call you servants, but friends. And now I give my life for you to prove that I love you. To prove that I am fulfilling the commandments. 
Hey, man, you're not keeping the law. They kept accusing him. That's all they fucking did. You don't keep the law. You don't keep the law. You're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. You're not doing this right. You're not doing this right. They followed after him privily or secretly to seek an occasion against him to try to catch him up in his words you see this gang stalking shit going on this whole damn time because he's telling you he's keeping the commandments and they're trying to say he ain't so then i got a question for you to religious folk then you would be looking like you don't keep no commandments if you are true won't you okay wait wait wait, wait. let's slow down let's slow down Yahusha said he came to fulfill the commandments. Did the religious Jews of his day believe that that's what he was doing? Or did they think he was lying? Okay then. So the religious people of your day. That, that think that they're good people. That think that they are righteous. When they see you, they will think that you are unclean, unfit, unrighteous, a wine bibber, a glutton. They will have all kinds of names for you. Because they don't know that as long as you are loving, then you are fulfilling it. If I love my brother, which means watch this, watch this. Watch how y'all don't know what love is. Have you lied to your brother? About anything. Have you lied to him? Do you lie to him? Well, then you don't love him. So then you're breaking God's commandments. Even though you didn't steal anything from him. Even though you didn't lay with his wife. Even though you don't have no idol built in your house that you're falling down to in front of you worshiping. You're still not keeping his commandments, nigga. And that's what people don't get. They think, you're, hey, you're sitting up there drinking a glass of wine. You must be a drunkard. You're not God's anointed one. You must be a drunk. See how it's not surprising when you already know that's what they're going to think about you? Because that's what they thought about him. They didn't think that he was righteous at all. They thought he was filthy. They thought Christ was a filthy bum. That's what they thought. They thought he was a glutton, a wine bibber, and a lawless, godless man. That's what they thought. And all along, he was showing them how to fulfill the commandments that they were seeking after. And why did Israel miss the mark of keeping the commandments? Because they sought it not by faith. It's all written in there. It's already, already written. And if you know you're an Israelite, then you know what your defect is. It is not seeking him by faith. Now, what does he say? When the son of man comes, shall he find faith? See how it's connected? If you're wise, you know that and you do that. Like I said before, you would say, wait a minute. My people inclination is to not have faith. It's to read the words off of the paper and do them verbatim. That's my nature as an Israelite, especially as a Jew. Is to follow it to a T and be a perfectionist. That is our nature as Jews. Well, you have to understand that that nature is there. And you have to revamp it in accordance to your king, who is Christ. He is the king of the Jews. It's already written in there that they put the sign up there above his head. And then the Jews said, don't put that up there. Say that he said he was the king of the Jews. Pilate said, what I have written, I've written, man. The king of the Jews. So it's about time you listen to your king and say, well, what must I do to be saved? Follow after me. That's how you get saved. Follow what I'm doing. Well, what are you doing? I'm living in love and in truth. That's what I do. I don't lie to my brother and I don't hate my brother. I treat him with love. And sometimes he may not recognize that because he hasn't recognized love. Love is God. So the only way a man can experience a man or a woman can experience love is to be experiencing God. So Christ said, as I see my father do, I do likewise. I only do what I see my father do. My father is love. So I'm following him to know what I must do to be loving. And then we in like fashion follow Yahusha, who is mirroring the father. And we and then become lovers. Even when it looks like we're not being loving. Like when Christ was yelling at them, calling them hypocrites. That didn't look loving. Like when Christ went into the temple and took that whip and beat those people with it and kicked them out of the temple. That don't look loving to people. Like when Christ looked at those people and said, woe unto you. That doesn't look loving. So are you telling me that Christ wasn't fulfilling the commandments of God? Because he said that's what he came to do. So then he must have been loving. And he wants to teach you that that is love. But a lot of you don't accept that. 
Y'all don't accept what y'all see coming from like people like the grandson of the right thought. That passion, that fire, that zeal, that great zeal that you hear when I speak. Well, did Christ have great zeal for his father's house so much that he beat the people in the temple and kicked them out? That's what I do. You think it's a physical temple, even though the Bible says that God don't dwell in a temple made with hands. So where does Christ have to do the whipping people? In the world. Just like I'm doing right now, I am whipping people out of the temple with this truth. I'm not giving you a fucking choice. I'm not. That's why they shun me and put me off to the side so that the public opinion won't shift into my favor. That's why. Where the people won't hear it and go, wait a minute, niggas, y'all been lying to us. At last, y'all get it now? That all you have to do is love. You don't have to kneel down at a certain hour of the day and do all this prostrating and do all of this magical shit and sprinkle a dust on your head and light an incense and do this and do that and pray in this position. And get in this, put your toe down on the ground and then put your finger up pointing to the sky and then another finger pointing to the ocean in the east and then looking like this with a prayer rug down on the ground. Stop playing these fucking games. Your master didn't do that. He taught you how to pray. He taught you how to walk. He taught you how to live. He taught you how to do everything that you're supposed to do so that you can feel, fulfill what you're supposed to fulfill. Because what is the duty of man? What is it? What is the whole duty of man? If y'all know it, then you would say to fear God and keep his commandments. Well, if that's the case, then you must know how to keep his commandments. And Christ is the one who showed you how. I'm the way. Is the way how you get somewhere? Yes, it is. So then if you want to know how to get somewhere, or as the man said, how must I be saved? Then follow the way. And that's what Yahushua told the man. Follow after me. Sell all you have and give, and give it to the poor and come follow me. How many people cannot sell all they have, give to the poor and follow Christ? Follow the truth. How many people can't do that? They're hoarding all their material goods, all of their money. They're hoarding it, hoarding and hoarding it, thinking they're loving their brothers. Please stop trying to mock God. He ain't mocked no way. He see through your shit. He see through it. So it's best you stop. It's best you let it go and be a real nigga today and accept who you truly is. Are you gluttonous? Are you covetous? Are you selfish as hell and only care about yourself? Are you those things? Or are you loving your neighbor as yourself? You're doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. Are you doing that? Because if you were really considering it when you did what you did, you would have great fear about the things you did. And I don't mean fear as far as being scared and trembling. What I mean is you would have great precaution in how you dealt with people. Precaution. Caution before. That's what precaution means. To have caution before you do something. Y'all ain't taking the proper precautions because y'all don't know what the hell to do. You don't know how to love. You ask people. I do. Why don't y'all? Y'all let people tell you they serve God. And then you say, well, what is love? They don't know that that's what you're saying half the time. When you say, what is love? They don't know you're saying, what is God? You see what I'm trying to explain to you? I'm trying to give you these gifts to make you just as powerful as God has made me. And you don't want to be that way. You don't want to be powerful. You don't want the spirit of power and might. You don't. And of sound and of a sound mind. You don't want a sound mind. You don't want discernment. You've all been deceived in your life by somebody that told you they loved you and they didn't. Well, could you be deceived if you actually knew what it was? Now, here I am trying to tell you what it truly is, but you don't want to believe me. And why? Why? Because you know not my father. That's all it is. You don't believe that he's love. You don't. You think that he's something else. Most religious people wouldn't be religious if they knew that he was love. Because how can love be a fucking religion, nigga? 
How can love be a religion? So you're telling me that me and my offspring, my relationship with my offspring, my feelings toward my offspring are not natural. I have to learn them. That's what you're telling me. I have to be learn. I have to learn how to become religious in order to love my child. No, I don't. I just do. I want what's best for my child. Look at the words. So then you're doing them like you want them to do you because you want what's best for you. Everybody does. So before I do anything, before I say anything, I consider how would it feel to be told that? How would it feel? And sometimes you have to do the hard thing. That is love. You have to tell your friend when they're going astray, even though sometimes it's uncomfortable. And most of the time, most people don't want to be told that, that they're doing wrong or going the wrong way. But if you love them, you tell them. And I know from personal experience that most of the time when you tell them, they'll wave their hands, scoff at you. They may even get mad at you and cast your name out as evil. We know that. But that don't stop us from keeping his commandments, which is to love my neighbor as myself. I just read it to you that that encompasses, encompasses the whole law. It's briefly comprehended in that single sentence. Why y'all don't accept that? Because I'm telling you, you got two types of people. You got one type of person. You got two types of believers. You got one type of believer that says it's love, accepts that it's love, finds out what love is, and then does it. And then you have the other belief, so-called believer that says it's love and that love is the fulfilling of it. But they don't actually know what to do. They don't actually know what love is. So they don't actually know how to love. They just say it with a mouth. Now, the Bible says they honor me with their lips, but their hearts. Where does love come from? Your heart. Where do the issues of life come from? Your heart. It is written. Can't y'all hear that today? So the issues of life come from your heart. So guard your heart. Isn't that what it's written? Oh, my goodness. How can you guard your heart? You have to put on the breastplate of what? Righteousness. Right thinking. And when you think right, then you will feel right in your heart. See? And then out of your heart will flow issues or, or rivers. See? Issue means to flow forth. It will flow rivers of living water. It's so easy to comprehend it when you let love lead you. When you actually keep his commandments. People think that like how I am on these videos is how I am all day. <laughs> most of the time I'm not talking, guys. I spend most of my day not speaking. <laughs> as strange as that may sound to y'all, most of my day is spent in silence. It's only when I am moved by the spirit to give these words is when I'm speaking like this. But for the most part, I'm quiet. I'm observing. I'm watching. I'm looking for an opportunity to love my brother. If he'll allow me. And most of the time they won't. It is already written all day long. I extend my hands to you as a hen extends her wings to cover her chicks. But you would not allow me. So all day long, I walk around looking for opportunities to help people. To love them. To support them. And most of the time they reject me and push me away. And it hurts sometimes. Just like it hurt Yahushua when he said that line I just quoted to you. All day long Israel. But you would not! Exclamation point. You would not allow me to love you. You won't let me love you. <laughs> you should let me love you. Israel. You should let me love you. That's what Yahushua says. But you won't let him. I remember one day. I was chosen out of the world. And I was on the streets. Giving away all my goods to the poor. As Yahushua instructed me to do. And I saw a woman laying on the sidewalk. In the middle of winter time. Covered up with a coat. Didn't cover her whole body. But just some of her body. But she was laying on the sidewalk. Coat covering her body. And I was riding around with my brother 
And I said, told him to pull over. I said, pull over, pull over, pull over. Because all we were doing was just driving around the city looking for people to help, looking for people to give to. Well, I saw this woman. I said, pull over, pull over. And I jumped out the car and I ran over to her and put my hand on her. I said, sister, are you okay? You need anything? And this woman jumped up off the ground, threw that coat off of her and cursed me out. The fuck is you doing? Nigga, I don't need no help from you. Who you think you is? I don't need your help. I was like, I just, it was cold. I thought you may need a blanket or some gloves or a hat or something. I got these things. I could give them to you. I don't need your help. Grabbed her shit and stormed off. And it was very shocking to me at that time. And it hurt me. And I said, all in my mind, I didn't say anything. She walked off. I just went back to my brother's truck and got in and we took on off, went to look for somebody else. But I said in my heart, I said, all I was trying to do was help you. I thought you were in need. And I just wanted to help and extend a helping hand. I'm sorry if I offended you. I didn't mean to. I was just trying to warm you. Trying to care for you. Trying to let you know that you're not unseen out here on this ground. I see you. I care. That's all I was trying to do. You see? Another day, I'm driving around the city looking for someone to feed and give some clothes to. And I see a brother walking up the street, clearly poor, clearly in a hard case. Young looking man, no older than 25 years old. And he's walking up the street and I pull over and I come running up to him. And he's like, hey, I'm like, hey, what's going on? I said, are you hungry, man? He said, oh, my God, yes. And at this time, I didn't have many things left. I mean, my house was practically empty. I had given everything and sold everything away. And I was pretty close at that time to pretty much having to leave my house and lose my house. So I didn't have much, but I had some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches I had made. And I said, hey, I got some peanut butter and jelly I made, man. Here, I can, I can give you some of that. So we walked over to my car, and he was like, oh, man, peanut butter and jelly is my favorite, man. Thanks. And it made me so happy. It made me so happy that I could help my brother. And not only that I could help him, but I didn't have nothing. I wish I had to give him the world. But I didn't have anything. But what I did gave him, what I did give him, excuse me, he appreciated it. And he hugged me. And he said to me, and, and I went back to my car to get him a pair of shoes because he didn't have any. They were destroyed, the ones he had on. And as I was getting them out the trunk, he says to me, he says, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this for me? I'm sorry, y'all. And I told him, because I love you. And he said, that's the way it should be. And I said, that's the way it is, brother. That's the way it is. I love you. And we got to look out for one another. And he said, man, that's so true. And I said, what are you doing out here? He said, I'm on the run. I said, on the run? He said, man, I'm facing 25 years in jail. I said, for what? In prison, I mean. I said, for what? He said, still in copper. It was 20-something-year-old young Hebrew kid, and he was taking the copper out of the uh, flagpole. And you know you're not supposed to desecrate a flag and all this other shit. And he was taking the copper that was inside of the flagpole out and he got caught. And he was on the run. And I gave him my wedding ring and my watch. And I said, I hope this helps you. And I wish you all the best, brother. I wish you all the best. And he gladly accepted those things and he went off. And that's what it's about is what I, the point of what I'm telling you. If I had just quit because that woman rejected me that day, then I would have never had that beautiful opportunity with my young brother Jesse is his name. My young brother Jesse. Sweetheart. Sweetheart. Running from prison 
for trying to get some money to feed himself. And many, many more stories. But the thing is, Israel, we extend our hands. May not always be accepted, but we extend them irregardless of if they're accepted or not. He said all day long, and so we do the same. That sometimes our arms get weary reaching out. They get weary, and we need support to help lift them back up, and we will always be supported. If we have extended our hands, then hands will indeed be extended to us. If you just remember that, that that's how we do it, and that's how we love one another, and that's how we take care of one another. Y'all feel me? So let love guide us all today. No longer playing any games and going back and forth with vain things, but let us love. Shalom Israel.